Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Calculating the Area of Right Triangles, Part 1. So we have a couple of goals here, and I'm excited to bring this to you here because I can make them, I think, easy to understand. Goal number one is to just learn how to calculate the area of a right triangle. It's something we actually use quite a bit, even in advanced classes like calculus and beyond. But also the number two goal, which is just as important, is I want you to understand where the formula for the area of a triangle comes from. I don't want you to just to, to memorize things. I want you to know where they come from so that math doesn't seem like black magic. It seems like something that makes sense. So what we're trying to do is take a look at the general case of a right triangle. Now I'm gonna draw a particular right triangle here, but you know this can be any shape and size right triangle. Now what does a right triangle mean? Right triangle means that one of the angles is a 90 degree angle. This angle in the corner with this little symbol, it means 90 degree angle. Actually, right triangles are really, really important because they form the foundation for the entire subject called trigonometry, mostly anyway, and on into calculus. So right triangles are really, 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 really important. All right, so this thing is going to have some area. That means if we paint all the inside of this uh, uh, triangle, we're going to calculate the surface area inside here. Now let's say that this triangle has a height H, and this side here is a base, we're gonna call B for base. So the area, the formula for the area of a right triangle is the following. It is one half times the base of the triangle times the height of the triangle. So this base times height, sorry about that, looks like another be there. So it's base times height. This is what we're going to use to solve every one of these problems. So for instance, for our first problem, it's going to be two millimeters for the base, three millimeters for the height, and we're going to calculate the area and we're going to use this equation. So you can just use it, that's fine. But I want you to understand where it comes from. Why is the formula for the area of this thing one half times the base times the height? So in order to explain that, Let's switch gears a little bit. Let's not talk about triangles at all. Let's talk about a rectangle because we've been doing, uh, we've been doing uh, rectangles, areas of rectangles for a long time. So let's say that this is a rectangle. That means there's a right angle in each one of these corners, right? 90 degree angle in each one of these corners. That's a rectangle. And let's say that the bottom of this rectangle has a base B and the height of this thing, we're just gonna call it height H. So you can call it length and width, Usually we say length and width of a triangle. Here, I'm just gonna use the, the letters B for base and H for height, it's fine, no problem. Now, let's calculate the area of this rectangle. What is the area of this rectangle? It's the length times the width, right? But the width is B and the height is H. So we could say that it is B times H. Now, I don't need to put a little multiplication symbol in here because now you know that when we have letters right next to each other, they're always multiplied. Now, let's instead, now that we know the area of this rectangle is this length times this length, B times H, let's say what would happen if we cut this rectangle in half corner to corner? Like what if I just literally got, you know, like a knife and just cut it like that? Then what would happen is I would have an upper triangle right here and I would have a lower triangle down here. And since this, the, the, the height of the rectangle is H over here, then that means the height over here is H. And since this length here is B here, then the length of this other uh, part of the, of the shape is B here. You see everything's symmetrical. So if we know that the area of the rectangle of the entire thing is just B times H, base times height, then what would be the area of the triangle? I'm gonna put a little triangle here to tell you what is the area of the triangle. Well, if the total area is B times H, and we already just said that if we slice it in half, this is one little triangle and this is another little triangle, then what we're basically asking ourselves is, if we make a little triangle out of this lower section here, what would be the area of this triangle? Well, if the area of the whole thing is B times H, then the area of this half region down here is just one half B times h. So there's a little proof of why the area of a triangle is one half base times height. It's because when you look at the original equation, base times height is what would the area be if this were just a rectangle? Because it would be b times h. That would be if I enclose the whole thing as a rectangle or a square. So then the area of any triangle is just going to take that area of the corresponding rectangle and just cut it in half. That's why there's a one half on the front. Now, as we get higher and higher in math, sometimes we can't prove things so, so easily. I think everybody can see this. And now you understand where the one half comes from. But when I can do it, I really like to show you where they come from. So now you don't just think, oh, one half 
B times H. It's, you know, you know where it comes from. It's just the area of the rectangle sliced in half. That's the area of a right triangle. So now we can apply that to our first example here. We have a triangle, it's a right triangle. The one side is two millimeters and the height of this triangle is three millimeters. So we can say that the area of this thing, all right, so here we're gonna apply this to our first triangle, two millimeter wide base, three millimeters tall. So it's quite a small uh, triangle here because a millimeter is actually a really small unit, okay? So what we're going to do is apply the equation that we now know the area of this thing has to be one half times the base of the triangle times the height of the triangle. All right, so one half, what is the base? You can consider two millimeters to be the base, so multiply by two, and then the height you can consider to be three, multiply by three. Now you can do this multiplication lots of different ways. You know, what I typically do is I multiply two times three first and then multiply by one half. But order of operations tells you that you'll start at the left and work your way right. You're going to get the same answer either way. Or what you can do is kind of treat them all as fractions. The one half here, I guess let me go to the, to the next line here. The one half can be here. The two, we can write it as two over one. And the three, we can write as three over one. You're still multiplying by two and by three, you're just writing them over one. Now, how do we multiply fractions? We multiply the numerators. One times two is two. Two times three is six. And two times one is two, and then times one again is still two. So two times one again is two. So you get six over two. So six on the top and two on the bottom, the area is going to be three, because six divided by two is three. And then what are the units? It's millimeters this way times millimeters this way. So we call that a unit of millimeters squared or square millimeters. So the answer here is three square millimeters or millimeter squared. Now let's take a second to just to remember, remind ourselves what is a square millimeter anyway. What it means is if I draw a really small square, now I have to draw it larger for you because a millimeter is really, really small. So I'm blowing it up here. If we have a millimeter, uh, a square one millimeter wide and one millimeter tall, this shaded region is called a square millimeter because it's just a square where the lengths of the sides are one millimeter each. How many of these little squares will fit inside of this shaded triangle here? Well, some of them will be cut, of course, by the diagonal, but still, if you add up all the pieces and you take all the little pieces that are cut and assemble them together, you're going to get exactly three square millimeters for the answer. And so for, when we're talking about units of length, we talk about millimeters, centimeters, kilometers, yards, things like that. When we're talking about units of area, we're talking about square millimeters, square centimeters, square kilometers, square light years, things like that. One thing I'll say at the end, I multiplied these out as fractions, but if you wanted to, you could just say two times three is six, and then six times a half is three, you get the same answer. Or you can multiply it in another order. What's one half times two? Well, that's just one. And so this one times three will be three. You get the same answer. Because when you multiply things, it does not matter the order you multiply them. So whatever's more convenient for you is, is how I uh, would like you to do it. All right, let's take a look at our next problem. So here we have a different shape rectangle, I'm sorry, triangle, eight kilometers long in this direction and three this direction. But it is a right tri uh, triangle because we have a right angle here. And so we're gonna do the same sort of thing. The area of all right triangles is one half, times the base of the triangle times the height of the triangle, right? So what is the base? Eight kilometers, so we'll just multiply here by eight. And then the height is three kilometers, which is three right here. So we're multiplying one half times eight times three. Again, you can multiply them in any order you want. I'm gonna go in terms of order of operations. What is one half of eight? One half times eight is four, but you still have to multiply by this three because we do this first, we have to do this last. Four times three is 12. And so the area of this thing we get is 12. What is the unit? Well, if we have kilometers and kilometers, the unit of area is always a square unit. So it's kilometers squared. So 12 kilometers squared. That's why we say kilometers squared. The little two up above means uh, that we're basically taking little rectangles that are one kilometer on each side and basically how many of these little, these little squares fit in there, that's how many square mil, uh, kilometers, 12 of them will fit. So you can write SQKM for square kilometers, or you can write it more commonly as kilometers squared, just like we did here with millimeters squared. All right, let's take a look at problem number three. Here we have a uh, another rectangle. Now this one's upside down, 
but it's still a triangle. All the same things apply. The area of all right triangles is one half times the base of the thing times the height of the thing. Now you might say, where's the base? There's no base here, but really all it is, is one side of the triangle, we can call it the base, the other side of the triangle call it the height. Because even over here, when we call this the base and this the height, they're all, they're just multiplied together. So I guess it, it doesn't really matter which one you call the base and which one you call the height. Even if I flip it around and put a three here and a two here, they're all multiplied. So you still get the same answer. So here we get one half times one of the numbers, which is four and then times the height, the other one, which is four as well. It doesn't matter if it's upside down. And then you can do it however you want. I'm gonna just multiply them in order. What is one half times four? One half of four. One half times four is just two. You still have to multiply by the other four. Two times four is eight. So the area is eight. And what units? It's inches times inches, which means inches squared. So we're trying to see how many of these little square inches uh, will fit on the inside. And we figure out that eight of these will fit. So if I actually you know, built this thing and then measured how many little inches, square inches I could fit that were squares that were one inch on each side, how many could I fit? I would fit eight of them. Yes, some of them are cut in half, but if I took all the pieces that were cut in half and I reassembled them to figure out the total, it would actually work out to be exactly eight inches. Now, I, eight square inches. Now I have a couple more, so I need to take these down and we're gonna conquer the last couple of problems right now. All right, here's our next problem. Again, an upside down triangle. We have one length that's 10 centimeters and one length that's four centimeters. So we multiply centimeters times centimeters. We're going to get an area in the units of square centimeters or centimeters squared, however you want to write it. Now the uh, equation that tells us the area of any triangle, any right triangle is one half times its base times its height, right? Which numbers do you use for the base and the height? It doesn't really matter because they're going to be multiplying anyway, but typically, this is what most people would say the base would be 10. So multiply by 10. And then the height, even though it's upside down, would be four, right? So you can just multiply them in order. What is one half times 10 or one half of 10 is five. You still got to multiply by four. And then five times four is 20. So the area is 20, but what units? Centimeters times centimeters is centimeters squared. That means we're counting up how many little squares that are each one centimeter on their side all the way that fit into here, and it's 20 square centimeters. So we put 20 uh, square centimeters, or we can typically, more typically write it as centimeters squared right there. All right, here's our last problem. Here we have units of meters. So when we calculate area, it's gonna be square meters. The area is one half times the base times the height. So what is the base? We're gonna call it nine meters. What is the height? We're gonna call it two meters. Multiply in order. What is one half of nine? So now here's where it's a little bit uh, harder. If you multiply in order one half times nine, then you, you can't exactly cut it in half. You have to have a decimal there. So if I were you, I would just do it in the reverse order. I would say one half times, multiply these two numbers first. What's nine times two is 18, right? And then you can do one half of 18. You know that one half of 18, or 18 divided by two has to be nine because nine times two is 18. So the area here is nine and the units are uh, square uh, meters squared or square meters. So we put the unit as nine square uh, meters there, all right? Um, if you don't like this, if you don't like multiplying the last two numbers first, I mean, then instead of doing that, just do it like this. Make it the one half times this nine, write it as nine over one, and then uh, make it the two a two over one. Now you have three fractions multiplied. So we're doing kind of an alternate way. You can multiply all the numerators. One times nine is nine, nine times two is 18. And then two times one times one is just two, and you get the same thing, 18 over two, which we just said is nine. So because they're all multiplied, yes, order of operations does tell you to go left to right, but you know they're all multiplied, so the order doesn't really matter. We've already learned about the commutative and associative properties, and multiplication doesn't really matter the order in which you do it. So here we have practiced how to multiply, how to calculate the area of, of triangles, and specifically right triangles. The thing I want you to really remember is from the very beginning, that this equation for the formula of an area of a right triangle, it doesn't come from nowhere. It means if we were to take the corresponding rectangle or square and find its area, it would just be base times height. But then to find the triangle, the area of the triangle is just exactly half of that because if we cut it in half, you have one triangle here and one triangle here. So one half of this would be the area of the shaded region. And this idea applies to any right triangle. 
So I'd like you to calculate all of these yourself. Make sure you understand the units, why we're talking about square inches and square centimeters and square kilometers here. And then follow me on to part two, get a little more practice with finding the area of a right triangle.